Factitious Disorders Factitious disorders are characterized by feigning falsifying, or intentionally inducing or aggravating medical, psychological, or behavioral signs and symptoms or injury in oneself or in another person associated with identified deception. A pre-existing disorder or disease may be present, but the individual intentionally aggravates existing symptoms or falsifies or induces additional symptoms. Individuals with factitious disorders seek treatment or otherwise present themselves or another person as ill, injured, or impaired based on the feigned, falsified, or self-induced signs, symptoms, or injuries. The deceptive behavior is not solely motivated by obvious external rewards or incentives, for example, obtaining disability payments or evading criminal prosecution. This is in contrast to malingering, in which clear external rewards or incentives motivate the behavior. Factitious disorders include 6D50 factitious disorder imposed on self 6D51 factitious disorder imposed on another. Exclusions malingering. 6D50 factitious disorder imposed on self, essential features. Feigning, falsifying, or intentionally inducing medical, psychological, or behavioral signs and symptoms or injury associated with identified deception. If a pre-existing disorder or disease is present, the individual intentionally aggravates existing symptoms or falsifies or induces additional symptoms. The individual seeks treatment or otherwise presents themselves as ill, injured, or impaired based on the feigned, falsified, or self-induced signs, symptoms, or injuries. The deceptive behavior is not solely motivated by obvious external rewards or incentives, for example, obtaining disability payments or evading criminal prosecution. 4. The behavior is not better accounted for by another mental disorder. Additional clinical features. 1. Examples of behaviors involved in factitious disorder imposed on self include falsely reporting or simulating episodes of neurological or mental symptoms, for example, seizures, hearing voices, manipulating laboratory tests to falsely indicate an abnormality, for example, adding sugar to urine, falsifying past or current medical records to indicate an illness, ingesting a substance, for example, warfarin, to produce an abnormal laboratory result or illness, and physically injuring or intentionally inducing illness in oneself, for example, intentional exposure to infectious or toxic agents. The simulation of illness, injury, or impairment and the insistence and intensity of its presentation may be so convincing and persistent that repeated investigations or even surgeries are performed, sometimes at many different hospitals or clinics, in spite of repeated negative or inconclusive findings. The motivation for the behavior is presumed to be psychological. Factitious disorder imposed on self can be understood as a disorder of illness behavior and adoption of the sick role. Seeking attention, especially from health care providers as a part of the sick role, often appears to be a motivation for the behavior. There is evidence that factitious disorder imposed on self in adulthood may be associated with being the victim of factitious disorder imposed on another in childhood. Boundary Normality, Threshold Some individuals with medical conditions may exaggerate their symptoms in order to gain more attention from medical professionals, family members, or the community, or access to additional treatment. Course Features the typical age at identification of individuals with factitious disorder imposed on self is 30 to 40 years, but at the time of first assessment it is often revealed that the disorder has been present without being detected for many years. There is some evidence that individuals with factitious disorder imposed on self typically progress from less to more extreme modes of medical deception, and from an episodic to a chronic pattern. Individuals with factitious disorder imposed on self often do not provide accurate histories or access to their past medical records. As a result, 
systematic data regarding the onset and development of their factitious illness behavior and its long-term outcomes are extremely limited. Developmental Presentations Factitious disorder imposed on self can occur in adolescents, and has been identified in young children. Among children and adolescents, commonly reported falsified or induced conditions include fevers, ketoacidosis, rashes, and infections. Methods of fabrication may include false reporting of symptoms, self-bruising, ingestion of harmful substances, and self-injections. A substantial majority of individuals identified with factitious disorder imposed on self are female. Boundaries with other disorders and conditions Boundary with bodily distress disorder and hypochondriasis, health anxiety disorder, individuals with bodily distress disorder or hypochondriasis may exaggerate their symptoms at times to ensure that their care is prioritized or taken seriously, as a part of excessive attention and treatment seeking related to somatic symptoms. However, unlike factitious disorder imposed on self, there is no evidence that the person is feigning, falsifying, or intentionally inducing or aggravating the symptoms. Boundary with dissociative neurological symptom disorder, in dissociative neurological symptom disorder, symptoms, for example, seizures, paralysis, are presented that are not consistent with neurological findings or other pathophysiology. In contrast to factitious disorder imposed on self, however, individuals with dissociative neurological symptom disorder do not feign, falsify or intentionally induce their symptoms. Boundary with malingering, in malingering, individuals also deceptively report, feign, or induce symptoms in order to falsify or exaggerate the severity of an illness. However, in malingering, primary external incentives are considered to be motivating the behavior. The most common external motives for malingering include evading criminal prosecution, obtaining psychoactive medications, for example, opioids, avoiding military conscription or dangerous military duty, and attempting to obtain sickness or disability benefits or improvements in living conditions such as housing. Malingering is not considered a mental disorder and is classified in the chapter on factors influencing health status or contact with health services. Boundary with other forms of self-injurious behavior, individuals who exhibit self-injurious behavior, often in the context of another mental disorder, may intentionally provide false information to examiners regarding either the self-induced nature of the injuries or the presence of suicidal ideation or intent. The deception in these cases is typically intended to minimize rather than exaggerate the extent to which the individual is viewed as ill, injured, or impaired. 6D51 Factitious Disorder Imposed on Another, Essential Features Feigning, falsifying, or intentionally inducing medical, psychological, or behavioral signs and symptoms or injury in another person, most commonly a child dependent, associated with identified deception. If a pre-existing disorder or disease is present in the other person, the individual intentionally exaggerates of aggravates existing symptoms or falsifies or induces additional symptoms. The individual seeks treatment for the other person or otherwise presents him or her as ill, injured, or impaired based on the feigned, falsified, or induced signs, symptoms, or injuries. The deceptive behavior is not solely motivated by obvious external rewards or incentives, for example, obtaining disability payments or avoiding criminal prosecution for child or elder abuse. 4. The behavior is not better accounted for by another mental disorder. Note, the diagnosis of factitious disorder imposed on another is assigned to the individual who is feigning, falsifying or inducing the symptoms in another person, not to the person who is presented as having the symptoms. Occasionally the individual induces or falsifies symptoms in a pet rather than in another person. Additional clinical features 
1. The range of behaviors involved in factitious disorder imposed on another is similar to those in factitious disorder imposed on self. The simulation or induction of illness or injury in factitious disorder imposed on another may be quite dramatic, resulting in numerous medical investigations and interventions in spite of negative or inconclusive findings. The person presented as ill, injured, or impaired would in many cases be considered to be a victim of physical or psychological maltreatment, i.e., abuse, which should be classified separately using the appropriate code from the chapter on external causes of morbidity or mortality. There is evidence that a significant proportion of perpetrators of factitious disorder imposed on another have a history of factitious disorder imposed on self. Boundary with normality, threshold. Some individuals whose loved ones have medical conditions may exaggerate the reports of symptoms to medical professionals in order to get their loved ones care prioritized or to access additional treatments they perceive as necessary or potentially beneficial. The most common presentation of factitious disorder imposed on another is a mother who fabricates symptoms in one or more of her children. Please like and subscribe.